number one way to supersize your business was the topic for our challenge today. Today is day 1,448 of What You Have To Now, documenting the journey as I actually just do business, both online and off now. I originally started this segment to keep track of my lessons learned and what I was doing, what worked, what didn't work. And I actually went back this last week and watched my very, very first piece to this segment. It was in 2018 and we were building a mobile app. We were working on a team that was building a mobile app and uh, lots of things happened through the course of that. But that's when I started documenting that journey. And I, I actually almost had forgotten about that. It's been so long since we worked on that because life happened, things happened. We had some huge lessons learned on that project and that project ended up stalling in programming because we hired the wrong outsourcing uh, firm in the UK instead of keeping it here, keeping it where we had a little more control over it. Uh, we believe people that said they could do things that they weren't actually capable of doing. Been there, done that, found that before in corporate America, should have learned that lesson, but obviously didn't and I had to repeat it. So <clears throat> today in Supersize Your Business, I promised, I didn't promise, but I said I was not going to do an idiom and I really didn't, but I ended up talking about don't quit. And I didn't look up the, where it came from. I might because now I'm curious because I didn't look it up. But I might look it up because I was thinking about what is the number one way to supersize and grow your business? What is the number one thing that you have to do before anything else in order to guarantee and, and as guarantee as much as humanly possible that you're going to succeed at something? And that is you have to decide. That you're gonna do it you have to decide and commit to it and know that stuff is gonna happen just like it does in all of our lives and all of our businesses along the way and that you've got the ability to figure it out you'll figure it out and you'll you'll twist and turn and do what you got to do but you'll get there and create what it is that you want no matter what no matter what people tell you you can or cannot do no matter what happens in the government no matter how many pandemics or that we ever have a pandemic happens <clears throat> excuse me my my new shake clogs up my throat in the morning and I don't drink enough coffee or water I, I do it as I'm doing my videos so I get this blah, 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 clog in my throat <clears> throat> sometimes I need to cough it out so that's what we talked about that that is by far the number one hands down thing that will determine your success or failure not your friends or your cousins or your teammates or your partners yours your personal success is always determined and dependent on you. We can blame a lot of other things and things outside of us, and we can blame COVID, and we can blame the environment, we can blame the economy, we can blame the politicians, we can blame our mom, our sisters, our brothers, our friends, our neighbors, our, our somebody that bullied us in third grade. We can blame whatever we want, but the truth is it all comes down to us and what we want and why we want it, right? If we know what we want and why we want it, and we decide that we're gonna have it, there is nothing that can stop us. You know, short of getting hit by a bus and killed, you're gonna get there. It might not be when you want. I mean, a lot of times we set goals and objectives and we want things right now, right now. You know, I wanna be at my ideal weight right now. Well, you know what, that's not gonna happen. It's probably gonna take me all year, maybe even then some, to get back to what I consider my ideal weight. So what am I doing? In the past, I would just feel bad about it or make excuses like COVID. But now I'm like, no, you're gonna set interim goals, interim weight goals this year and achieve them. My first interim goal, I picked a number, I stepped on the scale, scary as that was, picked a number for my birthday, which is March 12th, and will be working toward achieving that interim goal. Now, I may or may not achieve it, but if I decide I'm gonna achieve it no matter what, that is how I can guarantee that I'm gonna achieve that interim goal no matter what. And then if I set the next, interim goal and I choose and decide and commit to achieving it, I will achieve it no matter what. Now, of course, <clears throat> it has to be in somewhat the realm of, of doable, right? Even though miracles happen all the time, I don't think our plans should include that we're expecting miracles to happen for us all the time. Unless, of course, you expect miracles to happen for you all the time and then maybe they will. So uh, we talked about then five or six ways to guarantee that you'll be successful, that contribute to your success. And, you know, I'm sure there's there's been hundreds or if not thousands of books written on the topic. And um, the truth is 
You don't know until you go through it and experience it yourself, right? And we've all had successes and we've all had failures and we will all continue to have successes and failures throughout our entire life. It's what we do with those experiences that matter. So we talked about today in the BU 365 Day Challenge, day 16 today, we talked about one of my favorite exercises and it comes from, I'm sure, <clears throat> timelines where where we remember history class we all learned about timelines it's called the lifeline exercise i learned about it my first job in corporate america i was in a a week-long training called louis tice training and that's the first place i remember learning this lifeline exercise and we did this lifeline exercise where we look at highlights in our life and then we ask ourselves questions about those key events in our life and try to look for relationships and patterns and what things mean and i've taken that and broken it down and used it as part of the soap framework and progress. How do I know if I'm moving in the direction I want? And bottom line is I create a lifeline and then I graph on it the different areas and aspects of my life. And I'm personally looking for an upward trend over time in my lifeline. I want it to be that I'm moving toward what I want in each of the different areas and aspects of my life, right? Physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, financial relationships, contribution. And I had a confidence in communication April of last year. So I, I look at those too. Is my communication getting better? Some days it is, some days it isn't. Is my confidence getting better? Some days it is, some days it isn't. But overall, the trend is moving in the direction I want it to. And that's the reason I like the Lifeline exercise. I actually just decided today that I will make sure that I schedule at least one day a month in this year's BU Challenge to have a chance to look at our Lifeline exercise, to go back and revisit it and see if we want to add more details, see if we see any new connections or patterns or things that can help us learn more about ourselves because that's what the challenge is all about, right? It's about becoming a continually improving version of ourselves. And how do you do that? By sometimes you got to go back and look at what you've been through. Look at the past. We don't live in the past. A lot of people do, but I don't choose to. I choose to live in the present moment because it's the only thing I can affect, right? It's the only time I can take action. The only time I can do anything is right now. The future, not guaranteed. I'm, I'm a, a true believer and knower in that. The future is not guaranteed. You never know when you might be shut down and done. So that's why we want to live each day becoming the best possible version of ourselves. So those are a couple of things I'm working on. I'm thinking about and trying to decide if I want to uh, create in a software program like a members area with the 365 day challenge. I haven't done it yet. I should have probably thought about it last year, but I, you know, it, I can hire it out and have it done, but I, I don't know if there's, if I want to or not, or if there's value in that. I might do it because chances are I will turn this whole year challenge into a book. Right? We'll turn it into a book that people can go along with and then have the videos as supplemental free content for people that want a little bit more than just what's in the book. Because in the book, we'll just do the highlights and the notes and the draw little pictures and things. Um, I just started thinking about that today. So maybe I'll do that or maybe I will just create a guide in the Get Up and Go Challenge and we'll do the 365 Day BU Challenge as part of the Get Up and Go Challenge group page because that's just a kind of a... a side secret page that if people want to improve themselves they can go and they can they can see any of the 10 previous challenges the other things i've shared there i think we've got 14 guides in there already so this would probably be the 15th guide so if you have any opinion on that make it a guide or make it a, a free members area or make it a paid members area or make it a a bonus for um people to access with the book uh let me know let me know what you think about that do you think a book is a good idea on this i I have personally loved and really enjoyed the previous journal type books that I've done that helped me to break things down and do a small thing every day in order to get my overall goal for the year. Lots of people pick a word of the year. I know, um, I don't even know where I, I never heard of that until I came online. And then once I came online, everybody's picking their word of the year. And so I guess inadvertently, I've picked a word of the year by picking a an idea or a theme or an area of my life I wanted to improve over the last four plus years. So I did do one thing every day that scares you in 2018. I do one thing that makes you happy 2019. Do one fun thing every day in 2020. And then last year we did do one thing every day that centers you. This year we're doing the you, you know, pay attention to who you're becoming and we're creating it ourselves. I'm creating it with you based on your feedback and input and, you know, just ideas that I have and lessons that I've learned throughout my life. 
as I'm becoming a different version of myself. If I had done this 20 years ago, I'd be creating something totally different than I am now, as would all of us. Questions? Help? Offline, online business, hit me up. Otherwise, I'll be with you tomorrow. Bye. Have a great day.